Okay, so we're looking at Corpio 2, Chapter 4, Volumes of Revolution. This is the same as the Year 1 content. It's just got some extra bits in for Year 2. And as I've written here, it's effectively the same as Year 1, except that you can and should expect the integration to be much more challenging. Year 1 was always just polynomials. Year 2, they can throw anything at you. So what I've said here is make sure you've covered integration from normal maths and know that in your exam you can also be tested on all integration from further maths too. But because this is in chapter 4, there is some more integration that's in some of the later chapters. I think in chapter 6 there's some hyperbolic integration and things like that. Um, that They might not cover all of that kind of integration in these exercises, but in the exams you can expect to see anything. This is just going to kind of be blended with other kinds of questions. So I've kind of got um, a couple of bits at the beginning just to remind us about these. One of these is about the x-axis and one is about the y-axis. Well, the clue is always in this part here. This means that it is about the x-axis. This is the volume of revolution about the x-axis and this one means that it's the volume of revolution about the y-axis. So I'm not going to go through why this is the formula for this, but just as a reminder, if it's about the x-axis, let's say I was doing it between 0 and 1, that would mean that a and b would be 0 and 1, and if it rotated, it would create this kind of sort of cone-like shape that's this part that we've got here. So those are A and B. A and B in this case, if we're doing it around the y-axis, let's say I was doing this part of the curve and I was going to be doing it between, say, 0 and 1, it would be creating, when it rotates, a sort of a bowl shape that we'd be having for that kind of solid that we've got. So, okay, so just make sure you're reading the question really carefully which one it is and then select the right formula. So I'm literally just going to do one example about this, about the x-axis, and then you can try exercise 4a. <coughs> so it says the region R is bounded by the curve with equation y equals sine 2x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. Find the volume of the solid formed when region R is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis. So really simple for this, it's going about the x-axis, so the volume is going to be pi y squared dx and our limits for x are 0 and pi over 2. So what we need to integrate here is pi of y squared. y squared is going to be sine squared 2x dx. Now we cannot integrate sine squared in this form that we've got here. So we have to use the rearranged double angle formula for cos to be able to do this. The reason this can't be integrated is because there is no cos that's outside the front. If there's a cos outside the front, we can do the reverse chain rule. So I'm just going to remind us that the double angle formula for cos, one of these double, angular, double angle formula for cos is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So when I rearrange this, I get 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus cos 2x which means that sine squared x is a half minus a half cos 2x. Now I'm also going to write down the other one, which is for cos squared. Cos squared x is the same, but it's a half plus a half cos 2x. Now you guys do further maths. So this and this needs to be memorized, especially when you get to chapter 5. There is going to be so much integration of sine squared and cos squared and cos squared. I need you as a further math student, I need you to memorize these because they will speed up integrating if you ever see a sine squared or cos squared by itself. So this means I can actually just go straight in and instead of doing sine squared of 2x, be really careful, the angle doubles, it's going to be a half minus a half cos, double that angle, 4x dx, like this. So I can do that integration. A half is going to integrate to a half x. Now I know that sine is going to go to cos, so it's going to be a sine 4x. And I'm going to have to counter that extra 4 by dividing by 4. So it becomes minus an eighth sine 4x between 0 and pi over 2. Now I'm going to leave that pi outside the front. And I'm going to have a half of pi over 2 minus an eighth of the sine of pi over 2 times 4 is just 2 pi. Now when I put 0 in here and here, it's just going to be 0, so I can just leave it like it is. So I have pi being multiplied by, uh, that's pi over 4 for that part that we've got there, and then we've got an eighth of sine of 2 pi. That's also just going to be a 0 that we've got for this one. So we have just a 0 for that part, so we get pi times pi over 4, 
which is pi squared over 4. And this is pi squared over 4 because it's um, a volume. It's going to be pi, pi squared over 4 units cubed. So next video, we're going to do one about the y-axis as a quick reminder. But really, it's just an opportunity for them to test you on all of the integration stuff that we should have been learning.